I don't normally do should you read it videos for single books. I usually finish a series and then I do a should you read this series type of video as a way to kind of review the series and to kind of give people a heads up for a series which is usually a bigger commitment if it's something that they should consider diving into. But I decided to do a should you read it video for Perdido Street Station the book. This is the first book in a series and I have only read the first book but I think like should you read it is a very valid question for this book, more so than most books that I have read. I'm certainly interested in continuing in the series, but this does function as a standalone. Um, so that is also a reason. It's not one of those like, well, so far, blah, blah, blah. Like you could absolutely read this as a standalone. Um, like if someone said this, if I didn't know this was a series, like I wouldn't be like, weird, this feels like it's a series. Like this feels like it could be a standalone. It's not a shock that there might be more books, but it, it's a pretty self-contained story as much as this story is able to contain itself at all. But I do think, again, more than with most books, people should know what they're getting into, but also going in blind is fine. <laughs> So what did I know going in? Nothing. <laughs> really, truly nothing. I mean, I had the cover to go off of. So based on this kind of hazy city background, I could surmise it would have probably a urban or urban-esque environment. I do apologize if you can hear noise outside. I, much like this book, take place in an urban environment. And uh, there's a butterfly on my copy. I don't think all copies have a butterfly on it. So I didn't know if the butterfly would be important to the story symbolically, metaphorically, literally, um, but butterfly. I think I had vaguely heard people say that it's strange or difficult, but like that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So that's not really anything to like pin any expectations on beyond like this won't be a casual read necessarily, but I was like, I don't, I don't know what that means. But yeah, so I went in and I was like, all right, what is this? My first impression of this book very much was, what is this? <laughs> I think the best way to describe the vibe that I got initially, um, which I mean, it wasn't like a incorrect vibe, but it was like my first like vibe check, <laughs> um, was that if you combined Carnival Row with District 9, which if you've never seen Carnival Row or District 9, that is entirely unhelpful. But Carnival Row, is this sort of like Dickensian speculative murder mystery in this like industrial revolution-esque setting with like these lots and lots of non-human characters and things going running around and like the clashes between humans and non-humans and everything that's Carnival Row and District 9 is about sort of like humans coexisting with aliens um I know the actor in it is South African it's been a minute since I've seen District 9 I think it takes place in South Africa but for sure the main like actor in it is South African. Anyway, it follows like um, our main character and the interactions with these aliens that are called prawns. They're not actually called prawns. They're like um, racistly like nicknamed that. Like people refer to them as that. Like that's not actually like their like species name or, or their, their kind, but they like kind of live in ghettos. And again, they're referred to um, derogatorily as prawns. And they look like, you know, big bug people. I recommend both Carnival Row and District 9. Very different, except in the so far as they both remind me of Perdido Street Station or Perdido Street Station reminds me of both of them. From the two comparisons I just made, I suppose you can surmise there's gonna be some non-humans in here and that would be correct. <laughs> so what is Perdido Street Station? Not only do I think it's good to go in blind, I also think it's really difficult to describe or to articulate the experience or the contents of this book because it's this book is a lot of things, but straightforward is not one of them. It feels at times like a noir detective story, a kind of like Hitchcockian thriller, but at other times it's kind of verging on cosmic horror, urban fantasy. It feels grounded and anthropological, you know, which is a hint as to how I feel about it, but also simultaneously like wildly fantastical and otherworldly and like very bizarre. More than anything, this book feels like it's primarily interested in, beyond anything else, challenging the reader. And the story itself is kind of almost secondary to that goal. So like, what is the book about is not really a question that is like the most important question when it comes to what Perdido Street Station is or the experience of reading it is. So do I recommend it? Um, 
pass. Did I like it? Yes, I definitely did. It was not perfect. There are things about it that I would change or wish were a little bit different. So like, I think it's, uh, I think officially I rated it five stars, but it's like a 4.5 rounded up. It's not flawless, it's not perfect. There are, again, things by the execution that I was like, well, I wish this was a little bit different. But it's one of the most engaging and rewarding and engrossing reads that I have read in a long time. Normally, I try to put in a section that's like, here's some pros, like, pick this up if you like, or the type of reader that should read this is this, and then cons, like, steer clear if you're the type of reader that is like this, or these are reasons not to pick it up. And I can't um, really do that with this one. I honestly don't know who I would recommend this to. I really only know who I would who I would tell to avoid this, if that makes sense. Because with most readers I know, I could more easily say, oh, they should not read this, than name readers that I think should read it. And that's not to say that I don't think any people I know would like it. It's just, I think it's easier to say, oh no, you definitely wouldn't like it, than to say, oh, you definitely would. Because it's so strange that like, I don't know how to explain it or like how to tell if somebody would like this. But it's easier to tell that somebody would not like this. <laughs> so here are reasons why you might not like it. <laughs> it's weird and gross. Like if you don't want to read about things that are unpleasant, this book vividly describes very weird, gross, unpleasant things. It's long and meandering. There is a narrative that's kind of like holding all of this together, um, but the book itself is kind of scattered and as I said is more interested in challenging you than in like telling a story per se. So I think it's more in concerned with like playing with its own pieces than it is in advancing the overarching kind of plot of this. So if that sounds terrible to you, then again, don't read this. Um, it's pretentious. So I enjoyed this just as I enjoy Donna Tartt's writing and I enjoy Gene Wolfe's writing. But if you don't like Donna Tartt or Gene Wolfe and you don't like if any time someone says, oh, the writing is a bit, you know, like pretentious or complex, if that's a red flag for you, if sirens are going off, don't read this. Because if you want writing that's straightforward, this is not it. If you don't want writing that's making like obscure references and convoluted metaphors, again, don't read this. <laughs> and lastly, this is quite morally challenging. I think, as I said, this book wants to challenge you. It wants to test you. It wants to force you to feel uncomfortable and to make you question yourself, question things in ways that you haven't before. Um, it wants you to, to push your limits in terms of what you are capable of conceiving of um, and how much you're willing to stretch not only your imagination, but then once your imagination has been stretched, then moral conundrums presented by speculative circumstances that are there are no clear cut right and wrong it is only gray so if you want things to be more straightforward if you want there to be good guys and bad guys if you want it to be complex but ultimately have you know the right answer then no the especially towards the end of this book basically the only answer is that there is no answer to the situation that it presents you with i'm not saying that you personally can't have specific feelings about it or a, a way to approach such a conundrum but the book is by no means making a case for one thing or another. The book, if anything, is making the case for the fact that a case cannot be made <laughs> and just lets you linger with that. <laughs> so in conclusion, I have never read anything quite like Perdido Street Station. I am extremely impressed with the writing and I definitely want to read more from China Meville. For me, this, this works. I want to read books like this. It's interested in examining culture and examining moral relativism and examining philosophical conundrums and the boundaries of storytelling. What storytelling can do, what it can propose, what it can make you consider. And I enjoy being challenged in that way. I enjoy the types of questions that this book seems interested in exploring and in asking me to explore. I love books that prefer questions to answers and this very much seems to be such a one. But have you read Perdido Street Station? Do you agree with my assessment of it? Do you recommend it? Did you hate it? How would you describe it? Because again, I I kind of think it's good to go in blind, but also not so blind because like there's definitely people that should not pick this up. I hope I've given you a sense of that um, without kind of like getting into the nitty gritty because kind of just letting it wash over you is I think the way to go. But kind of a little bit of a sense of what that wash is going to be like might be advised. <laughs> so hopefully this was helpful. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.